So you've run broad phrase and auto campaigns that have used a lot of your ad budget and have gotten you sales, but unfortunately at a high ACoS. So now you want to focus on the keywords that really work for you best. But weirdly, when you looked at your search term report, there were relevant keywords that you should have gotten sales for, but didn't. So what this video is all about is learning how to analyze the search term report. And I'm going to teach you how to clean it up too. So it's easy to look at and review how to change your PPC campaigns for more sales by doubling down on the keywords that are actually working and how to optimize your listing for more sales for keywords that should have worked, but didn't. My name is Zane. I'm from Seller Metrics. We spend over $3 million of PPC spend every single month, scaling our clients' businesses profitably. So let's get right into it. Uh, so we are first going to just jump into my screen here. And what we want to do is download the search term report. So here we are in the front page of the Seller Central. What we want to go to is the hamburger menu, advertising, and then campaign manager. Once in the campaign manager, you will be taken to measurement and reporting. So sponsored ad reports is what we want to click. Okay. So now we are in sponsored ad reports and what we want to do is create a report. So we want sponsored products because we're looking at just the sponsored product campaigns. And then we're going to do search term. Search term is what customers are typing into the search bar when they go on amazon.com. And it will give us all the details that we need about when our product shows up. I'm going to do summary and the last 30 days. Okay. So the maximum limit is actually 60 days. Now the amount of time that you actually need of data to make good data decisions is really depending on how much money you've spent on advertising. If you had a low budget or low few sales, just do the maximum time, which is all 60 days. But if you've had a pretty, you know, high budget, you've gotten a lot of sales, you can do 30 days. So I will do the full amount of time. So I launched the product on the 8th and it's the 27th. So let's do save and then we run report and then it's going to take you to this page and say pending. All you have to do is just refresh the page and it should be done. And if it's not done, just refresh it again. When you have the product spreadsheet, this is what it looks like. Okay. It's very big, very long, very uh, technical looking. Um, and it'll give you some really important data like the portfolio name, campaign name, and the, it'll tell you the impressions, clicks, click through rate, units ordered and conversion rate. We're going to clean this all up. But before we get into diving into this, if you like this kind of content, guys, make sure you like and subscribe. First, we want to actually open this in a Google sheet. It's a lot easier to work with. Plus you can access it anywhere you want um, if you're not at your home computer. So that's why I like using Google Sheets. And you would you just want to do create a replace spreadsheet. And then when you import data, it'll just put everything here. Okay. So you have all this data. So let's look at some of the, the search terms. Okay. Okay. So the problem that we have is like, you'll notice that we have like a lot of search terms and it'll say watch box for men. And it says impressions 588 with a click through rate of 1.3%. Now that's an insanely good click through rate. But if you scroll anywhere else into the sheet, you'll see it again, watch box for men. It's the exact same keyword. Uh, and then this one has 189 impression, but only up a 0.5% click through rate. So the problem here, as you can see, is that the same search term is scattered multiple times throughout the spreadsheet and it's not giving you the collection data. So what we want to do is create a pivot table. A pivot table will help us aggregate all the data and it's going to do it automatically. It's super simple. I'll show it to you, but it's going to collect all of the data and aggregate all of the information so that you can then make a decision on search terms with all of the data totaled up. To create a pivot table, what we want to do is click the whole sheet. So click in the top left in this gray box right here. And what we want to do is insert and click pivot table. Okay. And click new sheet. Okay. So then that brings us here and then you, you will see the, this pivot table editor. Okay. And this is what we want. So filters, what we can do is we can put your portfolio name. Then what we want to do in the rows is add customer search term. And then you will see right here at the top left. And since we've added uh, customer search terms in the rows, and the, if you scroll down, you will have all of the search terms. Now we need the actual information about the search terms. So this is where we add values. So in the values, we're going to add just going down list is we don't need too many. We need impressions. So we're going to add that in the values. So all of the search terms totaled up and the number of impressions, that are the sum of their impressions. We are going to need clicks. We're going to need seven day total sales. We need seven day total orders. We definitely need spend. And that is all we need. Okay. So we obviously need click through rate, conversion rate, a cost and all that stuff but we are going to actually calculate that ourselves in a different way. But first, what we want to do is highlight everything and we want to copy. We're going to have to create a new sheet here and we're going to paste but we're going to pay special and values only. And the reason we want to do values only is because what we want to do at the top, the first row, we want to add a filter. Okay. Then what we want to do is seven day total sales and sort Z to A. The reason we needed to paste the values only is because if we try to add this filter without doing values only, it won't actually let you sort by the sales that you've gotten. Right. I wanted to actually do, sorry, this one total seven day total sales. And the reason this is really important guys by organizing it from Z to A. So basically the highest amount of sales per search term at the top is then is going to give us information right away on like, Oh, this is the best keyword for you. Okay. So let's calculate some other stuff now. Okay. So let's calculate click through rate, conversion rate, a cost and cost per click. Okay. So click through rate is really simple. What we want to do is now sum of clicks divided by sum of impressions. Okay. And then 
if you see these uh, this autofill, just put, press yes, uh, because then it's going to do the exact same formula for every single search term. And then we also want to click this row, change it to percentage, and then boom, there you have the click-through rate percentage. Okay, Conversion rate. So of the clicks that you've gotten, how many turn into an actual sale? So sum of totally orders divided by clicks. Conversion rate is also a percentage. So we're going to do the exact same thing. Highlight the column by just clicking column and go to format, uh, number and percentage. Same thing with ACOS. Um, we need to calculate that. So ACOS is the spend divided by the sale. So obviously this period has been a very high ACOS for me. And that's because I have been in a keyword research phase. So insert or format, we're going to do percentage again, because ACOS is of course in a form of a percentage. And then we're going to do cost per click. Cost per click is uh, spend divided by the number of clicks. Okay. So my average cost per click is a um, dollar 22 across the entire, all of the keywords not per keyword. So we're going to go to format uh, number and we're going to do currency. Boom. So now we have cost per clicks. Okay. Um, all of the, all of your data neatly organized by sales, um, the best performing keywords at the top, um, the amount of money you've spent on that keyword, the it's CTR, CVR, ACOS and CPC all in one place, neatly organized. Now we're going to get into the numbers here and I know it's really, uh, you know, kind of technical here, but this is kind of where the magic happens. And if you want more information, like if this is the video is not enough and you want to learn how to run your PPC campaigns better, uh, you can check out actually this book that we have. It's called ultimate guide to Amazon ads, advanced tactics and best practices. It's got all of the strategies that I'm talking about on, in this video and all of the other videos we've talked about. And of of course, you can follow along at your own pace and it's got a 4.8 out of five star rating on Amazon itself. So you definitely check out the book. You can learn a lot about PPC management and optimize your PPC to the next level. Let's get into the actual analysis. So what we want to do is obviously pick the keywords that work best for us and then double down on maybe exact match campaigns. OK, if you look at the top here, my best keyword here is watch this by stand. And what that means is that this is the keyword that is kind of just pumping out the best results for me. It's got the highest amount of sales. Its conversion rate is at 33.33%. It costs at 0.47%. Now keep in mind that um, its impressions is also fairly low. So the number of data points is kind of low. This might be something good for a separate phrase match campaign, but I wouldn't exactly do a exact match campaign with this because this is simply not enough data to make a reasonable decision. On. But if we go down to the next one, these ones had higher impressions, then we can make some more informed decisions, right? So a cost of 6%, a cost of 4%. That's th those are very good. As you can see, and the ACOS is really relevant to you. So do not use my ACOS numbers to make your decisions on whether the ACOS makes sense or not. Okay. So we have good impressions for the term watch case here. Okay. We're going to talk about watch case. It's got 8,000, almost 9,000 impressions. It's got 75, 75 clicks, three sales from it, $180 made. And the sum of spend was $100. So our ACOS was not bad at all. Technical error. And I will actually keep this in the video. As you can see, my ACOS were way off. That ACOS seemed really low. Sometimes what happens is I'm going to undo that. So if you feel that the ACOS numbers don't make sense, look at the top left, look at the formula. It says F2 divided by dollar sign E dollar sign two. So the dollar signs in the formula, what that means is that it's anchoring that cell in the formula. And what that means is for the rest of the cells, it's going to use the exact same spot. So E2 in this case, it's going to divide every single single keywords sales divided by the total amount spend, which is not going to give you the accurate a cost. You want the a cost per keyword. So to fix this, if you run into this problem is get rid of the dollar signs and then apply that. And now you will have actual keywords. So this makes sense, right? So when we look at the term uh, watch case, it's got an a cost of 56. So 56 isn't horrible. Could be way better for me, but it's something that I may not want to proceed with. If I look at watch display case though, 39%, that's actually decent. And I think I would need to optimize that more. But the point is, is that this watch display case is something that I may want to create an exact match campaign because my search term report says that generally speaking, I get sales for this and I get profitable sales for this. And the click cost per click is around the grand total cost per click, which is $1.23. So the cost per click isn't even that much higher than um, the average cost per click. So this is generally speaking a good keyword for me to use. Okay. So knowing this information, what I might do is I would take this keyword, watch this by case, and I would go to my ad console and create a exact match campaign for this single keyword. If you have some keywords that are just like performing that much better than the rest of your keywords, you might want to do a, a campaign just for that keyword. That keyword is also really important because you might want to rank for it because if you are getting clicks and sales for that keyword, then Amazon's algorithm is going to be like, yep, let's bring this to the front page. And then eventually for that keyword, you're going to get organic sales where advertising costs doesn't even come into play. And it's basically a free sale, free from advertising costs. <laughs> 
to be clear. So that's one example of how to optimize your PPC campaigns. You look at your search term, clean it up, see which keywords are doing the best, and then separate them out into exact match campaigns so that they can have a dedicated budget just for them because they work so well for you. We're gonna look at watch case for women, okay? So it's got a sum of impressions, uh, 5,000, so a solid amount of data there. $23 in spend, no click-through rates, no conversion rates, um, obviously, a cost can't be calculated because there has been no sales, so it's trying to divide by zero. Average cost per click is also pretty darn high, $1.68, and the average is $1.23, so that's a really expensive keyword that is not turning out for me. There's two ways that I can take this. One, I can make this maybe a negative keyword. So maybe women just don't like my design of my product, and that's totally fine. The other opportunity is that they may be interested, I'm just not displaying it well enough for that customer group. So maybe if I made it more appealing to women in the listing, then it is a high opportunity keyword. So it, you have to really use your judgment. So for example, so look at this this uh, this product right here. We have a um, protein shaker bottles for protein mixes, okay? Imagine you're running keyword campaigns for these guys and you have a wire whisk in it. Uh, people would type in um, wire whisk uh, shaker bottles and you should get sales for that, but you're not. So what you could do is actually improve your listing to make sure you show that you have that. So what these guys did was they added a label on their product that says two shaker bottles with two wire whisks. So now people know that this product does indeed come with a wire whisk and it's their main image as well. So if they're looking for a specifically a product that has a wire whisk, they want to see that up front and center, like their first image should right away show that. Another little thing that they did, interestingly, I, technically this may or may not be allowed. Look at all the different colors that they show at the left of the product image. So if people were typing in blue, uh, wire whisk shaker bottle and the listing image doesn't show that it's blue but it has a blue option they would see it now in the in, in the image in the advertising campaigns they can use that as one of the campaigns look at your keywords that you should be converting for and if you're not converting for them and you think like this is a really relevant keyword you can use this data to improve your listing okay because the listing is not optimized to show the feature that people are looking up for. Even if you have that feature, if you're not converting for it, it's because your listing doesn't show that. And your search term can really identify that for you. It's right there, right? Like I should be converting pretty highly for a watch box for men. But as you can see here, I have a cost of 114%. That is crazy high. So clearly I am not showing that in my listing in some way, shape or form, right? So I would go back to my listing and be like, okay, how do I position this well for men or for women? Because the women keyword wasn't working well either. Okay. So that's just an example of how you can gain uh, insight from search term reports. And I just want to uh, dial in, guys. There's going to be a lot of keywords that just simply don't work, especially the ones that you get from auto and broad campaigns. So a really good example is right here. Cartier watch case. Cartier is a, a different brand. And I would take that brand and put in a list of my negative match keywords because I don't, if someone is typing in Cartier, they want a product from Cartier, not from me. So I don't want my ad budget going towards that. Another great example is Apple Watchbox. I do not serve Apple products necessarily. And I have a six slot Watchbox, but look at this guy, uh, 24 watch case. This is another example of like negative keywords that I should, I do have a running list actually. And that's how you convert non-performing keywords into converting keywords and how to eliminate non-performing irrelevant keywords from your uh, advertising campaigns. But that's it for this video. I, I know that was very technical, but I hope it was easy enough to follow along. Again, it, you can check out our book, but if you want to take your brand to the next level, check us out here. If you're an Amazon seller that wants to grow your Amazon profits, schedule a discovery call in the link below. We are an Amazon agency that helps our clients grow their revenue and their profits and optimize their PPC. That's it guys. In summary, you've learned how to download a search term report, how to clean it up and how to do something with the information to either optimize your listing or optimize your PPC campaigns and build a negative keyword match campaign. Hope that was helpful and I will see you next week. Take care.